everybody in the world isn't happy. Seemed like everybody ought to be happy, right? That's right, and I was a kid, I started out wondering. I used to wonder why God made cockroaches, <laughs> mosquitoes, flies. We know why he made fleas, give the dog something to do. <laughs> Never could figure out why God made cockroaches, and then I got to wondering why Noah didn't kill those two when he had a chance. Talking to one of my friends one day and I said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Noah why he didn't kill those two cockroaches when he had a chance. And he said, what if Noah isn't in heaven? Of course, he wasn't. This guy wasn't a Christian. I said, then you ask him. <laughs> Lots of things make me wonder. I, start, I really started out wondering about a lot of things as a little boy. My dad used to spank me and say, son, the reason I'm spanking you is because I love you. <laughs> I thought, thank God he doesn't hate me, he'd kill me. <laughs> My dad was a wonderful dad, but he'd always stop right in the middle of spanking me and say, do you want some more? <laughs> that's a crazy thing to ask a little kid that's hurting already. And then when he got all done, he'd say, son, it hurts me worse than it hurts you. I said, well, next time, let's trade places. <laughs> My mom used to make me cream of wheat. Boy, I used to hate cream of wheat. Spinach, and green beans. Nobody should ever have to eat that stuff. I actually thought they were trying to get rid of me. Cream of wheat had big lumps in it. My mom said, that's the batch my dad made. Oh, I never did like that. Dad said, eat it. There's kids in China that love to have it. I said, let's send it to them. <laughs> and I used to think about those kids in China. Their parents would tell them to eat that rice. Uh, kids in America have to eat cream of wheat. <laughs> Surely it was that way. Dad said, if you don't eat spinach, you won't grow up and look like Popeye. You ever see a picture of him? He looks terrible. I didn't want to look like him. <laughs> Lots of things made me wonder as a kid. My mom used to say, don't, don't go near the water till you learn how to swim. We had to learn on the land, hope to work when you hit the water. <laughs> we never could figure out all those things. People say funny things, don't they really? They really do. They, we find out, we meet a lot of people, say a lot of things. We're down in Arkansas. A lady said, I'm going to bake you a pie that'll kill you. I don't eat pies that's going to kill me. We had a big meeting in California. One guy said, I've been watching you. Said, you're not as dumb as you look. <laughs> I just don't care for him saying things like that. We came back from Israel and I got too close to security in a New York airport and a policeman came over and said, sir, if you're gonna stand there, you're gonna have to move. <laughs> Thought I wonder what he meant by that. Never could figure out those things. Like, you go into a restaurant. I went in a restaurant the other day all by myself and had a hostess that came over. Sign said, please wait to be seated. She came over and she said, one of you? <laughs> Says, not two of me. I, some of the waitresses can't see very well. She said, would you like to sit down? I said, do some of them eat standing up now? <laughs> then when I sat down, she said, would you like a menu? I said, no, let me guess what you've got. Then when I was trying to decide what to order, she said, why don't you eat the chef's salad? I said, what's he going to eat? <laughs> Let him eat his own salad. I wanted a sandwich. <laughs> oh, waitresses are all right. They say funny things. You can't trust all of them. Years ago, I bought a steak, and when the waitress brought it to my table, she had her thumb right, right on the meat. And I said, ma'am, you, you got your thumb on my steak. She said, I know it. I don't want to drop it again. Tell you, you can't trust them all. <laughs> I should have known better than I went in that restaurant in the first place. I saw a sign, on, you ever see those signs on the door, no shirt, no shoes, no service? I always got amused at those, I really did. Went in with a bunch of teenagers one night, I said, that is a funny sign. I could go in without my pants on, they don't care, but I gotta wear, <laughs> I gotta wear a shirt and shoes, that's what's required. We were in New York just not many days ago driving down the road and we saw a sign that said, use both lanes. 
in our state, they give tickets to guys that, that uses both lanes. You can't believe everything, isn't that true? A lot of things you can't believe. We were in a college and saw a sign on the door that said, shoes are required to eat in the cafeteria. Some kid wrote under it, socks may eat anywhere. I don't believe everything I read. Coming right into your town, we saw a sign on the motel that said, free kids under 18 are giving them away in this town. You ever see those motel signs that free TV? That's why my uncle isn't here tonight. He tried to take one. You just can't believe everything you read. You just got to read the right things. Isn't that true? You can't believe everything you read in this world. Like we were in a mall, and I saw a sign on the, in the mall that said, for the, it was for the ladies, said, ears pierced while you wait. I got amused at that. I was standing with a friend. He said, Ken, as long as I've known you, you've always re you're always reading things. I said, that's right. That's a funny sign. How could they leave them? Punch a hole in them, they're going to have to wait. You know, I just can't figure out things like that. A lot of things is hard to understand. We were in, we were in Washington State, and our, one of our new men working with us saw that sign and said, watch for falling rocks. You ever see that in the mountains? He stood there. I said, it's not a tourist attraction. You know, it's just a warning. They never tell you when to quit watching, no. You ever see those signs, school crossing? They never cross the kids you have to look out for. We went in the post office one day and saw a sign Post office door said, only CNI dogs allowed. And I was just laughing, you know. I have friends who are blind. I'm not making fun of that, but that is a funny sign because the guy that's blind, he can't see it. And his dog can't read it. I never could figure out who it was for. I never could. Never could. We were in a big mall not long ago, and the sign said, restroom, little arrow point. They have those in the mall. I went down there and went a little farther and the arrow said, restroom, another arrow pointed. Long ways through that mall. Finally, the sign said, restroom. The arrow went like this, went around the corner. And finally said, restroom. The arrow pointed down and said, use stairway. <laughs> and, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I'll tell you. Ah, I'm glad tonight that we can believe the word of God. Aren't you glad for that? You can trust the word of God. That's something you can believe. Amen. people. I hate to be around negative people. You ever meet those kind? They buy a cemetery plot and then they drown at sea. When their ship comes in, they're at the airport. I hate to be around negative people. Did you get that? You don't want to be slow getting that. You know, I, I don't like things that are slow either. Like the 100-year-old man married a 99-year-old woman and spent their honeymoon getting into the car. I like something that's moving. I like something that's going. I like to see optimistic people. An optimist, a man that fell out of a 20 story building as he went by the 10th floor, he said, so far, so good. <laughs> so you can always be happy. You really can. A pessimist is a person who feels bad when he feels good because he's afraid he'll feel worse if he ever gets better. Now, God doesn't want us to be that way. Things are bad in this world. One man said, we're in a recession. I said, I'm not going to participate. I'm going to believe that we can live on the positive side. I want to be like negative people in New York. You know they're mugging each other in New York now. One guy robbed a bank and got mugged in a getaway car. One lady was walking down the street, supposed to be a Christian, and a guy came along, was going to mug her and take her money. Instead, he looked, took one look at her and apologized and said, lady, you look like you've been mugged already, and he let her go. There's <laughs> a lot of people like that in this world. The banks are in trouble in New York. A guy wrote me a check on a New York bank for $5, and the check came back, said insufficient funds. They're out of money. They just don't have it. That's how bad it is in New York. Negative people. 
Cold in New York, too. We were up there, it was cold. In fact, it wasn't quite as cold as Washington, D.C. We were there, and we saw politicians stand on the street corners with their hands in their own pockets. That's how cold it was there, really. Well, you can trust some things in life and other things you can't trust. I never trust a cook that will not eat her own cooking. It's hard for me to trust a, a sleepy pilot. I don't trust a lady who hangs Holiday Inn towels on her line at home. I would not trust funny sounds in the cemetery at night. One boy took a shortcut one night going through the cemetery and he fell in an open grave. And he jumped, jumped, and he couldn't get out. So he said, well, I'll just wait till he'll get me out in the morning. While he was sitting in one corner of that grave, another boy took a shortcut and fell in the other end of the grave. And he jumped and jumped. He couldn't get out either until the first boy said, bet you can't make it. Shoom, out he went. <laughs> Fear will do funny things to you. It really will. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things hard to trust. told me after service, said, go on over to the house and make yourself at home. We left the porch light on. So I took my wife and we went over to his house. And we went in and we waited two hours and he didn't come. I told my wife, I'm getting hungry. I said, in fact, I'm going to make a cup of coffee. She said, oh, don't do that. I said, they said make ourselves at home. They shouldn't say that if they don't mean that. I went into the kitchen, made a cup of coffee, and when I was getting some butter out of the fridge, you know, for the toast, you can't have coffee without toast. <laughs> I saw some big steaks in there <laughs> several years ago. And I said, my goodness, look at these steaks. My wife said, oh, don't touch them. They're probably for guests. I said, who do you think we are? We're guests. So I got a steak, I fixed the steak, I had coffee and toast. My wife, she didn't get anything. She was in the living room, I only serve in the kitchen. So I was enjoying it, and I was about halfway through, and the front door came open, and a man came in, said, what's going on? I came out holding a coffee cup and piece of toast. I said, relax. I said, have a seat, if you don't mind. I said, the minister will be here in a few minutes, I'm sure. He said, minister, what minister? And you guessed it, I was in the wrong house. I'm telling you, I prayed that the Lord would come. I didn't know what to do. And I said, is this your house? He said, yes, this is my house, and who are you? I said, I can explain, I'm a preacher. He said, that figures. And he, he was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I, I introduced my wife. I said, that's my wife there going, going out the front door. She was going to the car. <laughs> and I said, I'll, I'll pay for the damages, $5, $10, you know, whatever I've eaten here. Man, I said, I'm embarrassed. So he said, no, I guess it's all right. It's an honest mistake. I said, yeah, it is. <laughs> he said, it's different in it. I said, it sure is. I mean, how'd you like to be here tonight in this audience, somebody home eating your food? You know, some lady reading the newspaper, some dude out fixing the steak. You know, it'd be different, wouldn't it? So I started to leave, and he said, well, you might as well finish it. said, it's half eaten. I said, all right, I believe it will. So I sat down and he enjoyed it. I might as well. Amen.
got on a plane, or I was in the airport not long ago, and the uh, lady that was opening the little gate said, all right, everybody, get on the plane. I said, not me, I'm getting in it. I'm not going to get on it. Isn't it funny what people say? And then when, I, I, well, just before getting there, she said, uh, do you want a no smoking seat? I said, I don't want one that smokes. <laughs> Thing burn up on us. We got in there on the plane or in the plane, and they said, fasten your seat belt. I always got amused at the seat belts. I have to put them on my stomach, but they always call them a seat belt. You ever wonder about that? A lot of things make you wonder, really. And then I tell about my first flight. I spent the whole time in the restroom because when I got up, a little sign flashed, please return to seat. <laughs> I sat back down. You know, I didn't know what it was all about. <laughs> Stewardess came down the aisle and she caught her foot on the rug and threw a Coke on my head. She apologized, said, can I get you another one? I said, no, I got all of this one. It was everywhere. You have to keep a good attitude. Never get upset. My dad told me, never lose your head, not even for a minute, because your brains are in it. So... never realize we need to get to the root of the problem. Like the airplane that taxied down the runway. Just before it was ready to take off, they shut the engines down, slowed it down, turned around, went back to the airport. In a few moments, they took off down the runway again, lifted into the air and flew into the clouds. One of the passengers said, boy, what was that all about? The stewardess said, well, we had a bad engine, and the pilot wouldn't fly it with a bad engine. Oh, he said. You change the engine? No, she said, we changed the pilot. <laughs> so some people never get to the root of the problem. Some people are afraid to fly, like the lady that was going to the airport and said, Lord, I have never been on a jet in my life, and I'm afraid to fly. Please help me. And she had a little scripture verse box with little cards in with scriptures on. She pulled one out and put it in your pocket because she was going to read it before that plane took off. She got down the airport and saw that big jet. She broke out into a sweat. She said, oh no, I've never been on a jet before. I'm afraid to fly. But she remembered that little scripture and she reached in her pocket and she pulled it out and she read it and it said, today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. with me tonight, men and women, boys and girls, and say, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the dark. Look at that crowd. See there? I knew about fear when I was a boy. I used to ask my mom, who started this crazy thing sleeping at night? <laughs> Can't we stay awake all night sleeping in the daytime? I knew about fear. You know, when I had used the restroom at our home, our restroom was over 300 feet from our regular home. <laughs> and when the flashlight burned out, boy, I could run like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> they should have set up the Boston Marathon there. I, I'd have to tell you, I'd have been a winner. I, I never could see anything in the dark. My sister told me, if you close your eyes, nothing will get you. That's true, but you'll run into a lot of things. <laughs> and. I always heard something breathing behind me as a kid. Did you ever? Did you? I hear something going, shh, 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 
In the dark, he'd do that. He'd never talk. He'd just breathe. And one night I was running to the house and I dropped the flashlight. You don't pick it up. You keep going, because if you stop, he'll run right into you. He'll knock you down. I got to the house. I knew about fear. My mom made me go upstairs and go to bed, and I always looked in the closet. Did you ever do that as a kid? You that raised your hands. I looked at everybody's got to be someplace. And I knew better than to open the door and just reach in there. I saw a guy with no arm one time. What happened? He reached in and they tore it off, you know. I knew about that. My mom had an old broom upstairs. I used to take this broom handle every night. And I jabbed the clothes every night. I was hoping I'd hear something go, Ugh. I thought he was in there. You know, I really did. I'd always look under the bed. Did you ever look under the bed? I used to. So I was afraid if I didn't lift my feet, I'd it'd get you. Like that guy didn't have a leg, you know. Fear is a terrible thing. Fear will destroy you. Do you know that? And I said this to bring out this point that many people have grown up in life and they've never matured away from this. Fear is still a part of their life. And they're afraid what Satan's going to do to them. They're afraid that what God has blessed them with is too good for them. Satan's going to wipe it all away, take everything away from them. God wants us to be on the faith side. That God will see us We just pulled off the freeway. Everybody wanted pizza. So they went to get pizza. I wasn't hungry. I stayed in the, in the bus. But I was thirsty. And I saw a little Dairy Queen down the road. And I decided to go down to this little Dairy Queen or ice cream shop and get a Coke. And I did. And on the way back, I was walking by a gas station and there was a phone booth. Now, many of you will not believe this, but it really happened. It doesn't make a difference whether you believe it or not. And I was walking by the phone booth, and the phone was ringing. You might have heard me tell it on the 700 Club. And it just rang and rang and rang. I thought it was stuck. I don't know if they can do that, but I thought, isn't that something? I must have listened to it ring 15 times. I thought, boy, that is really unusual. But maybe it's an emergency. So I walked up and answered the phone, opened the little door there and set my coat down and answered the phone. I said, hello. Operator said, long distance call for Ken Gobb. <laughs> I nearly fell out of the phone booth. I told the operator, you're crazy. It's a bad thing to tell them. <laughs> they don't really like that. And I said, I, this is impossible. And here I, I don't believe, I believe in the possible. But I, I, was just, I was just shook up, really. And I said, that's impossible. I'm walking down the street. I'm not bothering anybody. Nobody even knows I'm here. How can a phone call be for me? And then I thought, I know what it is. I'm on candid camera. <laughs> so I was checking everything. You know, you don't want to look too dumb. I was checking to see if everything, my hair wasn't shooting out the wrong direction or whatever. And the operator said, well, is he there, isn't he? I said, y y yes, he is. She said, well, will you please put him on the phone? She said, the phone's been ringing quite a while. I said, no, I stand out there listening to it. She said, well, it, who's Ken Gobb? I said, I am. She said, why didn't you say so? I said, you didn't ask me. I said, you're asking for him now. Okay, I'm him. She said, are you sure? I said, lady, I don't know. As far as I know I am. But I said, boy, I've never heard of anything like this. In fact, I didn't even believe it. And we at that time were never going to really tell anybody. And so in a moment, I heard somebody on the phone saying, yes, I believe that's him, I believe that's him. I thought, who is this? 
In a moment, I was talking to a lady in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And she said, you're going to think I'm crazy. She was right. I did. But she said, you know, I saw you on television in Harrisburg. And she said, I have written a suicide note. She said, I'm ready to just end it all. I don't know which way to turn. And she said, on the bottom of the suicide note, I wrote down a number. And she said, I thought that, you know, I heard of miracles, and I thought maybe God gave me your office number in California. I said, lady, my office is in Washington. She said, well, where are you? I said, well, you made the call. You ought to know. She didn't even know what area she was calling through the operator. I said, I'm in a phone booth in Dayton, Ohio. She said, really? What are you doing in there? I said, I was answering the phone. You know, the phone was ringing. And so, anyway, she wanted me to pray for her right on the phone. There was nothing wrong with that. I'd pray for somebody anywhere if they needed prayer. I, that's what we're all about is trying to help people. And I prayed for her right there on the phone. When it was all over, I walked down the phone booth. Man, I was really shook. I left my Coke in there. Somebody's probably drank it by now. But I went my way, and there was a little rail there, and I sat down on this little rail, and I was just thinking this over. And the first thing that came to me was, I'm not going to tell anybody this because, you know, people will say, that guy is really weird, you know, and I don't want to get too acquainted with him. So, number one, I'm not going to tell anybody. Number two, I don't even believe it. How could that happen? Man, it wasn't a dream. I, I'm in real life. This really happened. And I sat there, and finally I went back to my bus, but the thought that came to me was this. And it has always helped me, and we believe it's helped millions of people, is that God knows at all times where you are. See, he knows.